এখন বলবেন মেধা পাটকার ইন সার্চ অফ হিউম্যানিটি all the eminent uh, persons on the dais dr amit roy ji sugato bos ji and others uh, i really am here to pay a heartfelt tribute to gaur kishor da it's indeed a history that he has created through his writing to his creation that all of you who belong to his widest of family and the closest family members know about and when there is an attempt to wipe off the history in different ways today in our country it is really necessary to preserve all that he has contributed who was gaur kishore da he was an electrician he was a fitter he was a restaurant worker he was in the chai bagan with his father and all the various occupations that he had gone through he has really used his experience to come to the understanding of what is humanism and humanity with humanitarian values and that is why i salute dr amitda and all the members of the centenary celebration committee for really deciding with the determination and hard work to work throughout the upcoming year with various activities not just celebrating the Raymond Magsesi award winner but the real message giver that is relevant even in the today's social economic and political context by bringing out various publications and organizing various programs of debate and deliberations who was gaur kishor da he was really a gaurav kishor da and he was also a garva kishor da i cannot forget my experience of visiting shanti niketan with him when dr savya sachi bhattacharya ji was the vice chancellor and the former vice chancellor amlan dat and all were present and the shanti niketan was kept open to receive us with the santhalis performing a dance under the tree that was flowering with bakul flowers and his sincerity in such kind of events his ability and depth in relating with the adivasis to the academicians was witnessed by me and we know that his support to narmada struggle his dialogue with baba amte ji his very very sensitive interaction with me about the movement and the writings in 1993 we cannot forget anything of that but it is pl deshpande pula deshpande ji is a known great literature from marathi who has written 
about 70 pages article on Gaur Kishorda and all the experiences that he has had with him are really worth referring to, but I can't spend that much time. And it's all in Marathi, which I really request the committee to translate into Bengali and publish it as a small booklet. Because what Pula Deshpande ji had witnessed and concluded about Gaur Kishorda was about his humane approach in every single incidence that he had witnessed and spent with. His stay in a small basti with Leeladi, who was also a very, very sensitive and cooperative partner of Gaur Kishorda. And when Ashok Kumarji, an artist, visited him in that community, the dwellers there had not even realized who was Gaur Kishorda. And the crowd gathered to see Ashok Kumarji, but then they felt that there was someone in the basti who was really living with simplicity and without having any showcase kind of lifestyle. He has said that's why that he was a part of Granthalaya and a Lokalaya, the house of literature and also the house of the people, the common people in this country. And we all know that his strong belief in all the values and rights underlined by the Constitution of India were really brought to practice with Gaur Kishorda's every action and every writing. His creation, not only about the Adivasi girl whom he brought into the film, and uh, that uh, Sajita, Sajina Mahato, he was really for saving that culture which was of the toiling masses. He was very, very, very sincerely committed with courage and confidence to raise questions and challenge the system on everything that was inhuman and unjust. And this is what is reflected in his writings, whether those are related to freedom, democracy, or nonviolence. His commitment to those values had come from his belief in the fact that man is the religion. <laughs> he has said that in no unclear terms. And for him, what was freedom, what was democracy, is very well reflected in this small, simple, old book, which with the title says how much assertive he was, even when he challenged the system and the decision of the rulers then, and they in turn challenged him. It was not only during the emergency in the decade of 1970s when, we wrote, when he wrote extensively and also was incarcerated and he faced jail. Let me have my say is the assertion which is reflected not only in the title but in the content of every article of his as Rupa Darshi published in Desh, which he was editor of. 
his understanding of violence was really something that we have to remember in the present context. Gaur Kishorda probably has gone away in search of humanity. If he was here today, what kind of letter he would have written to the Prime Minister Narendra Damodar Das Modi? His letter to Indira Gandhi during the emergency and related to it itself has clearly stated that while she was organizing anti-fascism programs, discussions simultaneously, he said that I cannot accept that kind of contradiction where on one hand you are imposing emergency and stealing my rights and my freedom and every citizens in this country while you are opposing fascism on the other hand. This kind of courageous statement of his and going beyond that and describing what is fascism in 10 points was very, very critical contribution towards that emergency. The inordinate desire to extend domination over others is fascism. To concentrate powers of the state in the hands of a small favored coterie, in other words, in the close circle of yes men. To take away the fundamental rights of the people on the pretext of doing good to them. To suppress dissenting views and crush opposition groups under various pretexts. To end the democratic esteem or at least to cripple it. Intolerance of others' views widespread and indiscriminate use of oppressive measures, to blow one's own trumpet and resort to character assassination in respect of the opposition by bringing the mass media under control through censorship, to give free reins to the leader's passion for self-adulation by proclaiming that the leader of the party is identical with the country, one leader, one nation, one flag. This is the well-known slogan of fascists and the last but not the least, progressive acceptance of the cult of violence. Tell me, my friends, what would one say about the present situation in India? Wouldn't he have written a stronger letter and exposed the fascist attitude, decisions, actions, and operations that are carried out today by the Prime Minister and the central rulers in this country. When he was challenging the emergency of those days, today is the super emergency that we all are experiencing. And hence his deep feelings with an ideological framework that, he, that got reflected in his writings and that brought out the fact that this kind of curtailing freedom is not just curtailing democratic processes and assault on the democratic institutions, but that also results in inhumane actions and interactions and also killing of the value framework that we have received from Mahatma Gandhi to Rabindranath Tagore to Swami Vivekananda and Periyar and so many of others, including Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose and all the freedom fighters, Shaheed -e Azam, Bhagat Singh too. It was his contribution with his deep faith in the radical humanism, no doubt about it. But he really has brought into a kind of coordinated framework which he has taken from the various uh, guiding personalities and that is what is special about Gaur Kishorda. 
he was not only beyond party lines, but he was beyond the dogmatic ideological frames. And hence, he has clearly defined what is humanity and what is not. And that is really relating to the uh, contribution of M.N. Roy kind of humanists. It is he who has shown optimism in even those days, no doubt. But whatever was happening in those decades, which is worsened in the present situation in our country, really makes us feel that we all must start and become a wanderer, as Gaur Kishorda is saying, that I am a householder, but also a wanderer. Let's be wanderers. Let's reach out in search of humanity to various sections of populations who are facing hell. What is happening in the name of religion and caste, you all are aware of and witnessing. While sometimes the fight is given by the political parties, it is generally the people at large who have to question violence in the name of religion and the discriminations which are inhuman. Here in Bengal, you all saved through that very electoral politics, which we have always some hope from, but not full confidence in to bring in the basic transformation in the economic, social, and political life that we are witnessing today. But certainly that the Bengal, where also the Hindu-Muslim division was used and resorted to, to create vote banks, the same thing is happening elsewhere, but we have not been able to save that humanity from this kind of fundamentalism in the present situation. What is happening in Uttar Pradesh, what is happening in Madhya Pradesh is something which is beyond imagination. The bulldozers have become the judges and the judiciary. But what is happening is creating the everlasting divide in the society and taking with them not just their all bhaktas, but also the Dalit Adivasi youths. And hence, in order to address the youth of these communities, which are suffering hell with unemployment and deprivation of various kinds, and stop them or prevent them from going into that direction of communal and casteist violence is something that is a challenge for everyone who would like to have a search for a humanitarian approach. And this is a must today because we know that from hijab to love jihad and all that is happening. It is in fact hate jihad that is being carried forward with one color flag or two color flags in certain, certain situations and that is all the politics of vote banks. When this kind of misuse of religion is taking place, can we not stop through intervention? I remember that Gandhiji had said to his colleagues, which with words which he would not have otherwise used, that aap nikamme ho, mar jao. And that was because when the borders were burning, in the name of religious division that led to the division further into Bharat and Pakistan, he could not really remain quiet and silent. And that is why he was killed. It was the shatru bhao ko nipatne ka unka uddesh, jiske karan hi unko laksh banaya gaya. Maulana Abul Kalam azad ko bhi nahi banaya gaya. पर गांधीजी को बनाया गया क्योंकि वो बहुत ही बुनियादी रूप से परिवर्तन लाना चाहते थे शत्रु भाव मिटाना चाहते थे 
And that really is something that we all should be active on. But this is not really happening. Many, many, many of us are watching and not doing the fact-finding and further promoting the love, muhabbat, unity and equity, even though there is a clear value framework starting with the preamble of the Constitution. But Gaur Kishorda was one of those courageous, not just journalists, but humanists, who took initiative in every way to question this. Questioning violence, what he has said is that, that's very, very important. He has said that non-violence is of the human maturity. And we all know that violence is really darpokta, kayarta, as Gandhiji has said it. But today that is becoming a really action of pride. And that is the message that is communicated. And then, where is humanity? When during pandemic, the one's own relatives could not go for the antya samskar and funeral rites were performed by the Muslim communities and groups and organizations as in Sendhwa of District Badwani of Madhya Pradesh. Just done fact-finding there. And all those who had performed the funeral rites for those Hindus who had, who were, uh, who had expired and their relatives were not even ready to come to the uh, graveyard, those were targeted and their houses were demolished. This is the kind of scenario that is there with the bulldozers and JCBs taking absolutely illegal and inhuman and unjust action, which cannot be justified ever. Those who were in jail were also coming accused and are still in jail, but now the NSA and ED, all the new legal weapons are used, which are violent. And when this is happening everywhere, starting with hijab, starting with beef, starting with what not, and finally reaching out to the absolute defamation of Prophet Muhammad. And then taking some position only when those 10 to 12 countries could take, give us economic challenge and not without it, that the action was taken against those two, Nupur Sharma and Navin Jindal, not the Jindal, the corporate, but another one belonging to that party, which has never uttered a word about this inhumanity that is spreading like venom in the various sections of our society. And hence we need Gaur Kishore Da today. We need such courageous writers who certainly will not be given freedom, who will certainly face incarceration, like the Bhima Koregao accused with whom now it is known that hacking and intervention and various strategization by the Maharashtra police was the real reason for having false allegations against them. While the Home Minister, who worked so hard during lockdown, is in jail today. But we know that today's journalism and media are fully divided whether you call it Modi media and Godi media or not. But we know that they all are not taking any position or taking a position which is inhuman and unjust. So where to go and search for? Yes, there are exceptions in every sector, whether in every related to every pillar of democracy. In judiciary, there are judges who take some firm position, but very, very rarely. There are certain cases 
which can really help us bring back the humanitarian attitudes in the society, but those are pending before the constitutional benches for months and years. And when Ayodhya kind of situation is created, which was never there because the mandir so were built on the lands donated by most of them, by the Nawabs. And that was a bhumi of Sarva Dharma Samabhav, with the gamchas being woven by the Muslim bunkers, weavers, and the jendu kehar wool were coming from the Muslim farmers and uh, garland makers. It is therefore necessary to really understand that even if we decide to really search back for the Ganga Jamuna Tehjeeb, it has to be a courageous action of various kinds. Are we even going and doing the fact-finding? When after the action related to the comments on Prophet Muhammad, we will not just react by saying that what was the relation between the Bhagwan Sri Krishna and Radha? And how many Sakhis Bhagwan Sri Krishna also had? No. We would certainly say that this kind of a deliberate division making needs to be stopped. And for that, really going into every kind of violence, even the violence that is trying to answer back the violent forces, as it has happened in Murshidabad or Howrah, even in your state, is necessary. Even if the fact-finding is not done, then what remains? How can we really analyze the overall political, social, and economic reasoning behind this kind of games that are played and the strategies as conspiracies that are used by the electoral politics? Even when the political violence take place, took place in Bengal, it was Gaur Kishore Da who had courage to comment on those, that very rarely people really go into the depth of it. It is pre-election or post-election, but every and any kind of violence to be stopped and to be challenged is something that is going to be a step towards search for humanity. And hence, we remember Gandhi, but we also remember Gaur Kishore Da. It is necessary today, therefore, that the violence of various kinds needs to be taken cognizance of. It is violence against the livelihoods, is the violence through assault on the sources of livelihood of the nature-based communities. How is the Jal Jangal Zameen taken away? And by whom? Lawlessness, as Sugata Ji was mentioning, that is commented upon in various writings of Gaur Keshorda. Today it has reached the peak. We know that when the bulldozing takes place, there is no law followed, leave aside the constitution. We know that when the livelihoods are affected, it is not something that is inevitable and something that is only due to the pandemic or virus of one kind or other. The real virus is that of vulgar inequity. And that is creating a loot of the farmers to fish workers to cattle grazers to Adivasis, Dalits. And that is why the 715 farmers really faced martyrdom and had the movement of Sanyukta Kisan Murcha. We had witnessed there that the farming population had come together, not just the tractor owners, not just the Punjabi farmers. And hence, when even today that movement goes on, the support to those kinds of people's movements only can help us bring back the human rights relating to the protection of ecosystems that is a must 
for saving livelihoods. It can't be just the Agnipath kind of schemes which are rejectable in no doubt. And when you put the youths on that path where they are facing unemployment, where they are facing underemployment, when even the factories in the so-called organized sectors are retrenching workers for gaining more profit and turning to the contract laborers, and the state's intervention is nil or only in favor of the corporates and the so-called employment generators. Killing employment of one kind is also violence and inhuman. We have to really take cognizance of this, not only in the context of pandemic again, but that has worsened the situation because that crisis is used as an opportunity. We all know how much is Gautam Adani earning. We all know how much is Mukesh Ambani earning. Looting the farmers by using that same agro-produce through their shopping malls for gaining huge profit and earning not less than 1,000 crores per day is something inhuman. We cannot really ignore these kinds of basic parameters of economy, which can lead to the Sri Lanka-like situation tomorrow, not just the situation in Bihar that is faced today. Hence, my dear friends, when Emin Royji also said, and we all keep saying, that the man or the woman who produces wheat, rice, jawar, every food grain must not be hungry. How can we really accept the position that 3,000 and more children die every day due to malnourishment? How can we accept that 1% of the uppermost class population in this country has 58% of property. In search of equity as humanity, we have to really take a position on the changes, the economic emancipatory changes that would bring in the new taxation formula and get at least 2% of wealth tax that would fill the state exchequer by not less than seven to eight lakh crores, that would be enough to make the education as one of the basic needs free for all. We can get with 50% inheritance tax when the inherited property really is gifted to a person or a family with birth, with no contribution beyond that. 50% of taxation is also justifiable, and that will bring in not less than 9 to 10 lakh crores into the state exchequer. Is any state government taking this position? Or do they feel that whether they are non-BJP state governments and whichever party has to really shake hands with Gautam Adani? The one who is taking over this country's public property, heritage to the sources of livelihood, how can he be a partner with anyone who questions the Modi government's policies and the opportunities taken during this pandemic as crisis? We are shocked to see that one government after another sooner or later, after coming to power, feels compelled to shake hands with Adani. It is Bengal, it is Kerala, it is also Jharkhand. And when we have hopes in those who question the communal violence, the religious fundamentalism, and really assert the equity and justice as the values that only can save humanity, we cannot accept this. We have to therefore side with farmers and Dalits, Adivasis, all of those 
who are struggling for not just their survival, but the survival of our economy, which can only be based on equity, simplicity, self-reliance. Atma Nirbhar Bharat ki ghoshna karna ek baat hai. Aur para Nirbhar Bharat banana dusri baat hai. All these contradictions is really assaulting that humanitarian values, policies, and also laws which are created since independence and have been the support for all those who are fighting for humane approach in economy as well as the social sectors. But is that happening? That is something which is missing, and hence we miss Gaur Kishor Da in this kind of situation. If he was alive, I'm sure he would have exposed all this and said that this vulgar inequity is intolerable. And when he really took some protest actions against the loss of freedom in those days and wrote a letter to his only son, Bhaskarji, where he said that I have two kinds of responsibilities, but I do not have the dilemma in my mind. I have to choose one. Every one of us cannot just look at our own parivar and have that kind of parivar vad reflected in our life, our life activities, but really come out of it and take strong positions with taking the parivar and the younger generation of the family together if we really want to move ahead in search of humanity. And that humanity is based on equity and nothing less than that. Even justice, which is an umbrella concept, cannot be thought of and defined without equity. And this is missing. The Statue of Unity of Sardar Patel is standing there, having spent 3,500 crores and displacing 72 more villages beyond to 45 villages displaced partly or fully with Sardar Sarovar. But that kind of attack is also resulting in the attack that is pushing Earth and planet into peril. And that is suffered, that is born by all of us, not just those who are being physically displaced. Today is the World Refugee Day, but we know that displacement with deprivation, disparity, destitutionalization is faced by the Dalit, Sadivasis, every sector. And those are the real producers, real distributors, real service givers. But they do not have even the housing right, the right to education, right to livelihood that is to be the state's responsibility as per every single directive principle that is mentioned in our constitution. But even that Article 39, which says that economic development should be such that the wealth will not be concentrated in the hands of few, but the directive principles are not justiciable, so the state doesn't feel duty bound, although that too is mentioned in the constitution, and hence that value of humanity with sensitivity is not reflected in the state's decision-making processes. Yes, in Bengal and in many states we know that welfare of the many, many sections taken into consideration and reflected in various policies and schemes, and that is why the people vote for them beyond the casteism and religious fundamentalism. But one has to go to the basic changes and transformation if we really want to have humane treatment to be given to that working class which forms 95% of the working population but are unprotected, not unorganized. And hence, if we are really in search of that kind of change, social, economic, and political, we have to have a very basic, courageous decisions by the political parties and rulers, but 
going beyond the electoral politics as Gaur Kishorda always had shown courage to, we have to really take position questioning within the party and also changing the overall governance where we will be more responsible and not just the elected representatives. And hence, in order to stop this exploitation, we have to really go back to the decentralized economy. Without that, how can we provide livelihood to those who do not want to walk on that Agni path? To those who have lost their source of livelihood in spite of the, the skill and the uh, contribution that they have been making. Just look at the Article 43 and we get everything there in the Constitution. What kind of employment generation we can create while 1,53,000 of workers have already committed suicide without even having a proper record because the governments are callous. We have seen the migrant laborers and the migration which is a result of no local employment generation. In spite of the Supreme Court's judgments and orders during the migration and the pandemic period, there is no real transformation into economy. The mega cities and mega projects, mechanized industrialization, everything is killing the sources of livelihood. And when 29 labor laws are being repealed, those which came out of the workers' struggle, revolutionary approach by the various trade unions since independence, what is it that we will take into our hands and stand before the industrial courts and tribunals? Just as the farmer's movement really resulted at least in repeal of those three laws, we have to get back those 29 laws and not just the four-week laws. Because working class is facing absolutely inhuman treatment in the factories everywhere. In the state like Madhya Pradesh, there is no labor commissioner, I would say. There are only company commissioners sitting there. And women are made to go for night shift, work for 12 hours on the machines, and still get not more than 6,000 rupees. And not even basic services like cooling in the room where they work for 12 hours. And we as a trade union experience how is the approach and the changing relationships that is the inhumanity between the workers and the employers that is supported by the state governments and the central government in one way or other. There are exceptions and all states are not doing the same. There is more space in the states like Bengal, I know about it. But we have to really go beyond that. And if the state governments also do not take a position and do not form an alliance to take a position on such things, sell out of the country with the public sector, the Chittaranjan locomotive in Bengal is now on the path of privatization as the whole of the railway, the profit-making public sector industry is with 12 lakh employees who are now slowly and steadily converted into contract, uh, contract laborers and nothing else. Friends, it is so much that is in front of our eyes happening and if we do not take cognizance, we cannot just depend on the investigative journalism, but we have to depend on our own action plans, which we can search. It is therefore also need to understand how is the globalization, liberalization policies are also creating an inhuman kind of economy. Their interventions, their maximum kind of global capital flows which are increased during last seven to eight years beyond imagination and their intervention into changing laws, whether it is the Electricity Act or anything else. It is they who are bringing in pressure and our governments who are partners in that kind of corporatized world, they are paying tribute to them, paying, I mean, becoming their slaves. And that is having an impact on the total economy. How can we really face all this and challenge all this is a question. 
because when the media is spreading venom, we know that even the children to youths are having in their hands curriculum that really supports corporatization. Narmada and Chipko moment, sec, uh, the lessons are uh, excluded now from the various CBSC and other curriculum. And they do not want to teach the children anything regarding the equity, justice, constitutional, and human rights. In such a situation with the changing educational policy, what kind of educational efforts we should really take to? In our Jeevan Shalas, we are very much conscious about those fundamentalists entering into even the Adivasi villages, whom they had taken into the Ram Naomi Julus and had taken the Kashmir files for the jhaki that was prepared on the tractors and DJ machines. And then those were pulled in front of the masjid and instigated the youths from both sides, both communities. And that has burnt their lives and their livelihoods. How can we tolerate this? We have to really look forward to the next generation. And that is why creating such kind of literature, but also the fact-finding reports, and creating the various ways and means of communication that would go with the Gaur Kishorda type of communicator with the strong message, courage, but also a very, very sensitive kind of uh, media that is necessary. But we all can become a medium to really communicate our values and our frameworks in the search of humanity. Friends, therefore, whether it is Gujarat files or Kashmir files, we know that it was Raja Hare Singh and uh, Sardar Patel who really thought about autonomy as something which is indispensable and something which is not in, uh, which is not uh, intolerable. But today, when the statues are uh, you know, uh, built, we know that the Kashmir is facing hell. So the past violence is also kind of recreated by those who do not care about violence and who only care about their vote banks. In such situation, whether electoral politics alone will suffice, we all feel that no, the moment politics is also a must. And our support and our contribution into the various movements which are on is something that will really help us bring back the humanity. And hence, today, when there is hate jihad, as I just said, we know that we have to really think about what is happening even to the ecology. And that is something that is bypassed and made us forget when the climate change is due to the economic climate change and political climate change. It is not the natural calamity that you and all of us are facing, whether it is Amphan or Isla. It is faced by the lakhs and lakhs of the toiling masses who migrate to Maharashtra and we had to put them into trains till late night to bring back to Malda, to Kishan Ganj, to various Uttar Dinajpur and Dakshin Dinajpur districts especially. It is impossible to stop all this unless there is a social uh, awakening, and not just awakening, but the strong action which can be inspired with the words of uh, Gaur Kishorda. And we also remember Gandhiji, Periyar, Ravindranath Tagore for Shanti. Yuddha nahi shanti chahiye has been not just a slogan. But when we cannot stop the war against Ukraine, we can at least stop these battles and that those are moving towards a war within India against the large percentage of our population who are feeding us and who are satiating thirst by saving rivers, saving water, which is destroyed with pollution, 
with the lifestyle of the so-called urbanized and industrialized populations which are enjoying comforts, which are having a materialism in their lifestyle as the only goal and vision, and that is at the cost of the people who are really serving us. But the whole humanity is at stake. And that's why when the 1,500 scientists are also warning again and again that we will not only lose the coal uh, kind of uh, treasures, but we can have the total destruction of humanity itself. And there are civilizations which have gone uh, in the oblivion. And hence, this is not something which is utopian idea or a threat that is deliberately created. No, it is something that needs to be taken seriously because the Himalayas are melting, but also the rivers are evaporating. The groundwater table is lost. And when the hills, mountains, land, everything is under attack with the mining opened up without considering people and the losses, but considering only profit over people and profit over nature, we cannot have our search for humanity reaching the real manzil of equity and justice. I would therefore say that it is the human to human relationship that really matters. And hence, with few lines of a song, I would say that we have to considering what are the priorities, what are the privileges of whom, at whose cost, and so on. And hence, also dealing with the communal and casteist violence, but violence against the life that is against the right to life and right to livelihood granted by the Constitution is something that is also a search for humanity. And hence, uh, we would say, एक हमारी एक है उनकी मुल्क में है आवाज़ें दो एक हमारी एक है उनकी मुल्क में है आवाज़ें दो अब तुम पर है कौन सी तुम आवाज़ सुनो तुम क्या मानो हम कहते हैं नफरत छोड़ो इंसानों से प्यार करो वो कहते हैं खून खराबा होता है तो होने दो वो कहते हैं भूले बिसरे मंदिर मस्जिद याद करो हम कहते हैं बेघर बेदर इंसा को आबाद करो इंसा को आबाद करो सिंधाबाद